Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon and today I'm back with my February book haul. So some of the books that I was sent by publishers, lots of books that I bought myself and a few books that were very kindly gifted to me. That is the order that we're going to go through them today. I normally do gifted ones in the middle but there's a reason for that are coming. Um, and just a little bit of a naughty tease I guess. I couldn't include, this is actually a smaller haul than usual although February is a shorter month. Um, but I, one, I'm trying to buy with more intention and also only when I'm at independent bookshops. That may have gone awry a little bit, we'll get to that shortly. But also I am omitting, oh, that felt like a posh word for a Sunday. Um, and I should say, apologies for the lighting is a bit odd. The sun's doing something a bit funny. It's mildly apocalyptic today and also the tumble dryer is on in the background. It's a very good eco one not horrendous for the planet, just putting that out there before anyone says anything. Anyway, back to what I was going to say, my naughty teas. Um, I haven't included a big box of books that arrived, which is the Women's Prize for Fiction Longlist 2024. You'll be able to see Mum and I opening that on Tuesday, just after six o'clock. So, right, let's get cracking with, first of all, books that I have been sent by publishers and have shared on the channel before, but these are either in finished form or a different form. First up, we have Sarah Perry's Enlightenment. I absolutely loved Sarah Perry's The Essex Serpent. It's one of my all-time favorite books. I've enjoyed her other books very much too. Really excited for this one. I know very little about it, and I tend to do that, or that tends to be sort of, the way I prefer things when it's an author that I've enjoyed before because I just kind of want to go in and see what the story is they're going to tell me. I think there's quite a lot around astrology in here. I think there might be stuff around religion and possibly the sprinkling of queerness. I'm not quite sure. Maybe friendship too, which were all themes that I actually really enjoyed in The Essex Serpent. Um, so yeah, very, very excited for this. It is out in May. Out now and a book that I'm planning on taking with me when I go on the run in a few weeks. Keep your eyes out for a very exciting announcement about a project that I'm doing across the UK in mid-March. What a tease, that's two teasers in one video, notice me. Cindy, if you're watching this, you'll be fuming. Um, anyway, um, I'm planning on packing this with me as I'm going to be taking quite a few sort of either thrillers or books with real propulsion. I've heard that is the case with this, The Lagos Wife by Vanessa Waters. And this is about a woman who you would think has absolutely everything until one day she goes missing and then you start to find out about her life. And it turns out that there was a lot going on she wasn't letting on. And I know Bernadine Evaristo, <clears throat> excuse me, I know Bernadine Evaristo has said she kind of raced through this book to the sort of, twisty end. There's something about the ending that she said was quite there, so mm, intrigued for that. Then we have the finished copy of Armistead Morpan's Mona of the Manor. Armistead Morpan is one of my favourite authors. Tales of the City is one of my favourite series of books, plus got me into reading and also made me feel like life was going to be okay to be gay. And this is set in the 1980s. We meet Mona, who was living uh, with Mrs Madrigal on Barbary Lane. However, she's now living in England and we find out more in the time of Thatcher Britain too. I think this is gonna be really great. Very excited for it. I've sort of held off reading it because I've been nervous because I don't know when there'll be another one. And also because I love the series so much. I don't know if you ever get that. And then a book that I haven't held off even though I was a little bit nervous because it is an author who's becoming one of my absolute favorite authors. In fact, I've read over three of their books now. So she is officially one of my favorite authors because this was a corker and I'll talk about it in my February wrap up. Coming soon, don't know quite when, but soon. And um, it's Stoneyard Devotional by Charlotte Wood, which is about a woman who's dealing with grief and she goes to a nunnery uh, to kind of get some solace and to sort of process stuff. And there's a really interesting dynamic between her judging the nuns and the nuns sort of judging her, which I loved. And what I also really loved, see I'm doing a practically wrap up of it now, but I'll talk to you about it in more detail, I promise soon. Um, but what I really love about Charlotte Wood is that every single book is completely different and I think that is very, very exciting. I love, love our edition of this. I think that cover is stupendously good. Then on to books that I haven't mentioned on the channel before but were also from publishers. We have Anyone's Ghost by August Thompson. Now this is one of those books that I have been so excited for but I can't quite put my finger on why because I've not heard anything about it other than Buzz That It's Brilliant from the publisher and a few advanced readers. It says on the back, it took three car crashes to kill Jake. 
that's all I know, but I am so intrigued and kind of already quite invested. So I would like to get to this in the not too distant future, possibly when I'm back from being on the run. Teasing with teaser. Uh, we have a book that I uh, very, well, I got a DM because I said I thought this cover was one of the best covers on Instagram. And a lovely folk at Heather's used DM me and said, would you like a proof of it? And I was like, yes, please. It's hard copy by Fien Veldman. And it says on the back, this is a story of girl meets printer. And I just think it sounds Brilliant. I'm just checking. It's not translated. It is translated by Hester Velman. It doesn't say from what language. Where is Fien from? Let's have a look, see if we can find out. Uh, this could take a while. No. So um, I'll let you know once I read it, because I would like to get to something up soon. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm hoping, though, really funny, but also poignant. I really love it's a deaf thing to balance that, but I really love it when that's done really, really well. Poignant yet funny books. Now, I have a big chunkster in my hand, not for the first time. <laughs> this is The Covenant of Water by Abraham Begay's. Several of my patrons have said that I really, 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 really need to read this. Shockingly, I've not read Cutting for Stone, which was huge. I can't remember how many years back now, but it's back when I was doing the Readers podcast and Anna and Michael from the amazing, sadly no longer running, like the Readers actually, uh, podcast books on the nightstand, raved about this for months and months and I kept meaning to, not this one, because that would have meant they were psychic and foretelling the future, but raved about cutting for stone and I meant to read it then, didn't. This, I've just heard nothing but brilliant things about and Andy Oliver, when I last had a catch up with her, said that she was really, really enjoying this and that also made me really want to read it. So. Again, this could be the perfect book to take on the run because it's a book that will certainly last you a while, but I'm gonna be having a rucksack, like a proper rucksack, and um, it's gonna be quite heavy, so I don't know. I don't know. I feel like also I'm gonna need thrillers to sort of decompress. Teasing, moving on. Um, so <laughs> then we have Glasgow Boys by Margaret MacDonald. Now I have to be honest about this. This actually arrived in January and I wasn't sure about it and sometimes there's, there's a book like that I'll hold off including it in a haul. There are also lots of books when I mentioned that I only mentioned some books from publishers there are quite a lot of books that come unsolicited that I don't know if they're me or not so they go onto a pile of possibility which is actually I can see it is getting pretty high and I need to go through it and I'll do that on Patreon in the forthcoming weeks I've got to pre-record quite a lot of stuff over the next two weeks before I'm away for two weeks. Anyway um it says meet Banjo and Finley thrust together in a group care home when they were teenagers inseparable until an incident three years ago and apparently explores the power of identity, forgiveness and how even the most fraught childhood is not without hope. This is giving me a sort of Shuggy Bane vibes but possibly friendship. I don't know. We shall see. Maybe a bit of um sort of Kerry Hudson's Lowborn but fictional too. So anyway, yeah, intrigued for this one. Then we have three books from the lovely folk at McNally um, Jackson. And um, have I said that right? Is it McNally? No, McNally Editions, which is sort of an offshoot of McNally Jackson, the bookshop. And we have Reminiscences of a Student's Life, a memoir by Jane Ellen Harrison. Now, if this is about a memoir, oh, Mary Beard has given it a quote. I've got some news about Mary Beard and about me and my mum doing with oh, it's too much coming very soon um, i'm really really excited for it. it's not till some but anyway moving on um oh but i think yeah this is gonna be oh see this oh god sorry the reason get to the point simon the reason i'm excited for this i'm not gonna edit this video because i've got to go out shortly after this so you'll get it fully uh i wanted to say uncut but again that's quite rude e unedited as nature intended top and tailed. Um, anyway, so my point was, I think mum would really like this because yeah, Mary Beard called her my hero. That sounds amazing. So I'm guessing it's about a classics teacher. Amazing. Amazing. Can I say amazing more? Um, then we have Operation Heartbreak by Duff Cooper. Um, I have no idea what this is about. It says on the back, a perfectly told tale of defeat and glory and a pain. I think I might have said that wrong, to gallantry in the face of the absurd, inspired by a real life secret mission during World War II. Now, World War II put me off a little bit. However, and I say this having not read a single one of them, but every single McNally, McNally Editions book I've heard about, 
on Tinterweb from other people gets a rave. So at some point I would like to read quite a few. I have quite a selection of them. Just there, that's not the best angle, I won't lie. Uh, but yeah, just up there, I have a selection of them. At some point I would like to do some videos later this year, later this year. I mean, how is it already March to be honest? But yeah, later this year, where I focus on one particular publisher just because I need to whittle down some. In fact, another publisher, one of the, blah, 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 one of the publishers that I'd like to do a vlog on like that is forthcoming shortly. But anyway, last but not least, we have Ladies of the Rachmaninoff Eyes by Henry Van Dyke. Now, this one I had heard about, and why was it? Is it because he was queer? Oh, I'm not sure. And I don't want to say that if it's not true. I mean, I've already put it out there and I'm not gonna edit this out. But anyway, yeah, another one. I really love the simplicity of this cover. It's giving greasy cafe table vibes, but also illicit affair or naughtiness. That's what it's giving to me. Do you ever do that where you just judge a book by its cover randomly? And um, then we have one of the books that's arrived that I'm most excited about uh, in recent weeks. And that is, I can't quite believe I've got it. The Glassmaker by Tracy Chevalier. I adore Tracy Chevalier. I think she's just such a wonderful human. And as I've been saying in quite a lot of videos recently, she also has incredible taste in books. Doesn't quote on many, but when she does, they're often amazing. Well, so far actually, as I say often, all of them have been amazing. I am umming and about reading this and then reading some of her recommended books and kind of making that into some kind of vlog. I should say, if you didn't see The Glassmaker by Tracy Chevalier, and it's out in September. Hopefully, I will be doing uh, an event or possibly two, because I might do one on as well, with Tracy this autumn. So yeah, it's set in Venice in 1486. I'm trying to read that backwards, but you'll have seen that the whole time. And it says, in a city steeped in tradition, in a world built for men, Ursula Rosso is about to make her mark. That is all I need in a blurb. Dear publishers across the UK, Northern Ireland, and possibly the world, uh, I, yeah, that to me does it for me. I think that's a really, really effective way of doing a blurb. Then another book that I commented sounded brilliant on Instagram and the folk at Scepter very kindly sent me it is Dead Animals by Phoebe Stooks. There you go, if you can see that. Ooh. Uh, yeah, fox on the cover, you know that I love fox. Although, since we've got George, who is, for those of you who might not know or might not have seen my endless stories about him on Instagram. Instagram is always linked down below on my Patreon, along with my artist formerly known as Twitter X, uh, which I still can't decide if I want to say or not, etc. Uh, wish list, because my birthday's coming up this month, and other things, uh, always down below. But what was I saying? Yeah, George, um, since we have sort of fostered for now, hopefully forever, we'll see, a lovely ginger Tom called George, who was living in the shed. The foxes have kind of vanished. We've heard them quite a lot, but we've not seen them. Anyway, what's this about? I believe this is queer and a bit sinister. And that was the vibe that I got. And that was all I needed to know. And I don't want to actually look at the blog because this is one that I could head to. Hmm, will I head to it soon? I don't know, because it's gonna be, frankly, and this isn't a spoiler because this isn't out until after the dates up for submission. But obviously I'm gonna be heading to, may have already, read a few, uh, the Women's Prize long list, which, yeah, anyway, uh, very excited for this. Queer, quirky gothic, I believe. Then, penultimately from publishers, we have Salt Blood by Francesca de Torres. I have had many names, some were given to me, some I took. In the main, they call me Mary Reed. As for my true name, go ask the sea. Now, I don't love books set on boats. This is about Mary Reed, a pirate. However, I read Kate Moss's brilliant The Ghost Ship last year, and I don't know, something changed. Something has changed within me. Um, it literally was like that, something just kind of went, and this is, um, it starts off in Portsmouth in 1685, and we follow Mary, who becomes Mark, and becomes a pirate. So really, really, really excited for this one, as I am, last but not least, from the publishers, um, Choice by Neil Mukherjee. I got so excited when I saw Hani Yanagihara give this a fab rave review when she got an early advanced copy because I trust her taste in books a lot too. In fact, actually, there's quite a few that she's recommended me that I've not read. Maybe that's another vlog at some point. Moving on. Um, I don't know what order that was, but that was me cogitating. Um, yeah, she raved about this. I've read Neil Mukherjee before and really, really enjoyed his writing. In fact, 
we did start doing some pen palling together and then we sort of stopped. Shame on us. I wonder if we can start that back up again. Anyway, um, I have no idea what this is about other than I really like his writing. I love the fact that Hanyu gave it such a great review and I'm excited to head to it pretty soon. Lovely. Now, before I head on to books that I bought, I'm going to mention a book that I sort of stole. I didn't steal it, that's very dramatic. But a book that um, I got from Mum's when I was there, um, trialling out her Airbnb, which I think she's now not going to put out for um, bookings until the summer. And she had some of uh, me, my sister Miriam and my brother, little brother Seth's um, books on the shelves and this, The Last Vampire, was one of my absolute favourites when I was a kid and I was wondering, let me know in the comments down below, for World Book Day, should I do a video on sort of the books that made me from childhood pretty much to now? Would that be something you'd be interested in? Let me know. But yeah, I love this book and there was another one that was an audio book that Victoria Wood read by what it's called with the same family in it, the Hollands family. And yeah, I, yeah. anyway, I picked that up and I got very excited to uh, see it. I felt like, I don't know, I almost didn't want to take it, but I was like, no, I really, really want to get to that. Anyway, on to books I bought, and hopefully I'm going to remember where I bought them all from. I know the first one for sure, because it was the first book I think I bought in February, and it's Mongrel by Hanako Footman. And I mentioned this in the Women's Prize Predictions video that I did, where my mum kind of basically sat and listened to me wang on about 16 books books that I thought could make the Women's Prize long list. Will they? Won't they? What were they? Check that video out, I'll link it down below, but also, yeah, we'll find out on Tuesday. Um, and this is set uh, over three different places, well, three different continents, I don't think it is quite continents, but we've got Mai, who leaves a Japanese mother at the age of six and is growing up in Surrey in the UK, Yuki, who leaves the Japanese countryside to pursue her dream of becoming a concert violinist in London, and Haruku, who attempts to navigate Tokyo's nightlife and all of its many vices, working as a hostess in the city's sex district. And it's how these three characters' lives all intertwine, I believe. It's from Footnote, which is a publisher that I have been wanting to read books from. And it's got this glossy cover because I picked it up in Toppings and Co. in Ely near Cambridge. I have to say, the staff were not the most welcoming. There, I'm putting that out there. I don't know whether to mention that in a future Instagram post because I do want to start doing on Sundays, like today, a series of uh, posts where I celebrate bookshops through the hashtag Sunday Shelfie, which I think Bookmark on the Wall started. Anyway, um, so yeah, but I don't know if I'll mention that or not. Then, a bookshop that I absolutely loved, that I discovered quite by random um, when I was looking at places to stop on the way to my mum's when we went for the aforementioned uh, testing out of her Airbnb. And it's called The Bookends, and it was right near one of the most amazing Caribbean food restaurants I've ever been to in my life. I will never forget, and I often think of, and would like to go back for quite soon, their amazing jerk dumplings. Um, but the two pictures, I, two pictures, the two books that I picked up in The Bookends and had a really lovely chat with Mercy, who's one of the owners, were... Sicily by Annie Garthwaite, which is a book that Kate from Harrison Harris raved about last year, and I've heard of quite a few people mentioning it recently since it's come out in paperback, including, I think, Ruthie at Booker Bookshop in Oswestry, Street, who has very good taste too. So if booksellers are loving it, then i got to give it a whirl. It's ironic that I bought this though, as we'll see later, but yeah, really intrigued this. Oh, I should say it's set in the 1400s, and I believe Annie Garthwaite is rewriting that period in history through the eyes and stories of women at the time who've often been written out of history and I love the idea of that. The second one's coming out soon. And then the other one that I picked up is Everyone Knows Your Mother Is A Witch. And I should say actually, these two were perfect for the lovely um, Ben Reads Goods Read Good Challenge. Is that what it's called? I think it is. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, because Jan, you are Jan, Jan. Uh, you could have Annie and Anne, etc., as a pick. And then I think it was Fever, you are was the second one. Um, and this is set in a plague. So it was fortuitous that I bought them. I then messaged Ben and said, Oh, um, do you mind if I play catch up? I still haven't, but maybe I will. I can't remember what March's prompt is for that one. Oh, and just on the 
the subjective prompts. The prompt for the savage reading prompts, which are the prompts me and mum uh, picked from that jar there that lots of you lovely lot had sent us and created a um, list of 13. You can do one a month with one bonus at the end of the year or you can do them whenever you like. But the third one or the March one that we pulled from the jar is to read a book from a prize, that, sorry, that has been long listed, short listed or won a prize that you've never read a long list or short list from before. So. There we go. Um, now, I mentioned earlier about wanting to potentially do a series of vlogs where I head to particular publishers, uh, or possibly even, in this case, publishers series. Favourite editions, I have been collecting all of their republished, lesser known works, what, Basically, that's the whole point of Vapor Editions is they republish books that have been out of print for a while. I have all of them now. This Neighbours by Diane Oliver is meant to be an incredible collection of short stories. I believe she died really young and this is one of the only sort of collections of work that was left, but they are meant to be phenomenal. And so I would love to get this. I picked this up in Pritchard's Bookshop, which is just outside of Liverpool near Formby, um, well, no, Nick, it's between Liverpool and Formby near Crosby. And can you believe it? I have not been there before in the whole, well, nearly 12 years that I've lived on the Mersey. Well, not literally on it, but by it. Anyway, I got that there. So that was that one. Now, I ordered this next book from Blackwell because <laughs> I don't really like the UK edition very much. Um, however, what I do like, and indeed I would go as far as to say is love is the translator of this of this work and this collection it's your utopia by bora chung translated by anton her or as i internally often refer to him anton hun because he's an absolute hun um i really enjoyed cursed bunny i think i read it too quickly and would like to go back and read that again at some point there's a couple of books from the last couple of years that i'm thinking of maybe would that make a good vlog oh i said i wasn't going to do any theme blogs over the next few months, but they're sort of coming to the forefront of my mind. Anyway, I must remember to write all of these down. If one of you in the comments could leave a list of all the blogs that I said I was going to make, that would be really helpful because I'm off out for dinner shortly. Anyway, um, it's Chris and I's uh, sixth wedding anniversary today, so there you go. Um, and then we're going to watch a film that my uh, former colleague, um, well, I guess acquaintance colleague, um, is in. Anyway, <laughs> I've got on a Come off an absolute tangent. Back to Anton Hun, her. Uh, yeah, I've heard this collection is as good as Cursed Bunny, and the stories are often, well, often, the stories in that were all really bonkers and quirky, so that's what I'm hoping for again here. Although, as I said earlier, I like it when authors really mix things up, so maybe this could be completely different, and I'll be fine with that too. I'm just now thinking of when I read Curse Bunny, and I did read it too quickly, but I was staying in a hotel in Oxford that had a lamp in the shape of a bunny, which if you've read the story, the titular story, titular, from that collection, you'll know why that was quite a weird experience. Anyway, now the next two I bought from Waterstones because I just couldn't find them in, and I'm surprised with the first one actually, um, I couldn't find them in indie bookshops. Erasure by Percival Everett is the first. I read The Trees and really, really liked it. I have Dr. No on my shelves. However, I really want to see American Fiction, which is the movie that this has been adapted from. However, like many adaptations, I say that, I put off watching them and then don't read the book for blinking ages. So again, another themed reading vlog that I thought about doing was getting to some books that have been adapted in the last sort of six months, be they to TV or to film, and uh, reading the book, watching the film and seeing how I got on with them. And uh, the trailer for American Fiction is absolutely brilliant. It makes me think it's gonna be great. It's about a, a, a black author who he's doing okay, but he goes, I think, to see another author speak and they sort of play up to all the black stereotypes, I guess, and all the tropes, but also the sort of sad sides to the black community and become bestsellers. So he decides to do the same. And it's basically poking fun at that, which I think is absolutely brilliant because, yeah, we need more black joy, um, as well as to learn all about the different histories we don't know, obviously, but I think this book has that wry element to it too. So that sounds brilliant. And then, now, 
I can't remember the name of the account I saw this recommended on Instagram, but I was like, oh my goodness, I have to read this. Um, this is Nearly All the Men in Lagos Are Mad by Daniel Ari Kuku. And short stories set in Lagos in Nigeria. I love books set in Nigeria. I'm a big fan of Nigerian fiction and I hadn't heard about this. And you know when you haven't heard of a book and then you do suddenly hear about it, it's like, oh, you want to get your mitts on and read? That was the case with this. I just need to actually now get on and read it. So there we are. And then on to some secondhand book treats before I head on to gifts, but also to particular books that I'm going to show you, but you won't actually know what they are. And that will also make sense shortly. But first up in, a, I can't remember which charity shop I scored both of these in, but I was well chuffed. We have not one, but two Persephone's. We have Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson, which I almost picked up in this version when I was in Edinburgh back in January and didn't because I was like, oh, I own it, so I can't, I don't need two. But it turns out I didn't own it. I have read it, but I didn't own it. So that felt like fate. And then the other one, ooh, the other one I haven't heard of, it's Earth and High Heaven by Gwentholyn Graham, which is just a great name. Now, I can't tell you anything about it other than it is number 122 and it has gorgeous end papers, sadly, with second hand ones you don't often get the bookmark. Um, but because they don't do that with Persephone's, you don't get a blip, you get sort of a, a, a um, quote or a segment of the book in the cover, but I'm sure it'll be good and I'm sure I'll get to it at some point. And actually, I've just realised I've never shared shared i've never shared the persephone room with you all it's not quite finished but maybe that's another project at some point then and this was on tuesday in nantwich i picked up five books in charity shops first up the story of aj fickery by gabrielle zevin i interviewed well no i don't like the term interviewed i hosted slash chair slash 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 had a good old natter with uh, Gabrielle at Waterstones Liverpool last year for Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which I thought was great. I think I tried this a while back when it first came out and wasn't too sure about it, but now I want to head back and do it. It's about a bookshop with a grumpy owner and yeah, I'm here for it. Uh, and then I picked three books up from the same series. I've read the first in Robin um, Stevens. A Murder Most Unladylike Mystery series and really, really, really loved it. I for some reason haven't got to the second one and must, but now I have the third, the fifth and the sixth. So at some point into the fourth. And also I'm now like, oh, do I have to wait to read that till, do I mention the C word on here now so early in the year? Christmas. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm thrilled. And also they've got the um, sprayed edges, which is lovely. And for £1.50 each, although I have to say, the stickers were an absolute nightmare to get off. Um, I thought that had actually been the cover torn off there, but it's actually part of the pattern. I don't know if you saw my mild panic there in my eyes. And then I also got um, one of the Simon Sorella mysteries by Susan Hill, A Change of Circumstance. I love this series. I spread it out patiently. I thought she'd stop doing them, but I've heard a rumour that they're coming back so I can start getting onto them again. And whenever I see a paperback, I've got a lot of the hardbacks hidden behind here because my crime hardbacks are all down there. Um, and obviously hardbacks are quite tricky to cut about and I don't like to bash them and I'm really precious about it and my mum thinks I'm a bit weird about it anyway, moving on. Uh, so yeah, whenever I see one, I'm like, oh, if I haven't read it yet, I must keep it because at some point I will get to it. So we have that. Now, I mentioned there was going to, I mentioned that I was going to mention, hmm, I did mention there were two books that you wouldn't be able to see what they were that I got and they are both of the West Kirby Books of the Month picks so far. The first of which, and you'll see why I'm not opening them yet and or haven't opened them, is this one. And in here we have Fiona Williams' A House of Broken Bricks. I'll put a picture of that here if I've got time to edit. If not, I apologise. But anyway, it's in here and I haven't opened it for a reason. And that is I'm going to wait for the third or maybe fourth and then I'm going to open them all and then read them and see if my taste and West Kirby books taste align but also I really want them I'm demanding this in fact Dan and Jordan I would really like them to do a subscription service because I think they'd be on to a winner I mean the way Dan does these is just beautiful this is the second uh, of their books of the month and they start them midway through the month which is why I've got them both in uh, February um 
And in here we have Hard by a Great Forest by an author whose name I can't say. And also, I think if I met him, I wouldn't be able to look him in the eye because he's absolutely stunning. Not that that should be part of anything at all, but it is. Uh, anyway, that's in here. So um, yeah, I'm going to head to those in due course and do, I think, a vlog on it. But that links into gifts because when I was last at West Kirby Books for an event. I have been in since, I think, with my mother and we did a bit of shopping before we went out for dinner with um, Jordan Dan, which was lovely. Um, but I did an event with Andrew McMillan for Pity, which is one of my absolute favourite books of the year so far. I talked about it in my January wrap-up. I'll link that down below. Um, and um, I had a proof, but I got a finished copy so that I could have it signed as a lovely memento and very kindly Jordan and Dan gave me it as they did Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellors which I'm currently reading and absolutely loving I totally misjudged this book by its cover I'll talk about that in more detail soon both on Instagram because I want to get back into reviewing books singularly as I go but also when I do a wrap up for March I started this in February but I haven't finished it I doubt I'll have finished it. Maybe I would have finished it by the time I film a wrap up, but I feel like, I don't know. Does it count as a February read or is it very much a March read? Cause that's the month I'm gonna finish it. I'm only about halfway. So yeah, it could go either way. Um, but absolutely loving this so far. And hopefully we'll be doing an event with Coco in May. And then I mentioned it was funny how I picked up a copy of Cecily, why do I always want to say Cecily? Cecily uh, by Annie Garthwaite, because when I went for a meeting at Story House, which um, is an amazing space with a library, cinemas, well, cinema, theatres, uh, a really, really fantastic restaurant and all sorts of shenanigans going on where I'm also the um, associate literary um, curator. Um, and we'll be working on what was it in the meeting we did, we agreed I think it's about four festivals in the forthcoming like year and a bit um anyway more on that in due course um I got there and I got the way it sent me a copy of Sicily there and also her new book forthcoming book The King's Mother so at some point I will head to these and maybe do a giveaway of one of these two although is this if you've read this without any spoilers let me know if it's got a real propulsion to it because it could go in my i was gonna say suitcase i'm not taking a suitcase it could go into my uh, rucksack when i'm on the run later this month as i mentioned so there we go those are almost all of the books that came in february because also there were some that uh, came in that, like I said, would go on to the pile of possibility and I will make a video trying a chapter of each of those for Patreon, of course, always link down below. Um, and also, I've obviously not included the box of Women's Prize along with the Books 2024, but you can find out more about those with me and Mum on Tuesday, just after six o'clock, like I said, and head to my predictions video if you haven't already. Uh, if you fancy some more, Simon, sometimes just this can be frankly too much, uh, then my, as I mentioned, Instagram, Patreon, uh, X, the art list formerly known as Twitter, and also uh, my wish list for my birthday because it's coming up, uh, ooh, what is it? Two weeks today? No, three weeks today. <gasps> three weeks today. I'll be 42 on the 24th in the year 2024. That's a nice feeling to it, I think. Right, I'm gonna go, because like I said, I'm off out for dinner, um, but I will speak to you all in another video very, very soon. Also, let me know if you enjoyed this not being zooming in, zooming out when I say things daft, me just having a chat with you, possibly talking a little bit too fast sometimes as is my want, but also no black and white bits when I was possibly quite boring during this. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'll speak to you all in another video very, very soon. <gasps> well, about the Women's Prize long list for 2024. That was the final Teasy McTease from Mr. Teaser. I'll speak to you soon. <laughs> Hope you're reading something fab. Bye.